This local news coverage is brought to you by Hillock Family Dental. Meet the team and find out more at hillockdental.com. Hey there viewers, Mick here with ModestoNews.org. Before we get to this video, I want to clarify really quick what the city council members are debating in this video because the debate is not really whether they want to put a measure on the ballot to increase the sales tax by a half a cent. That's not really what they're debating. They're debating what the wording of that measure would be because basically there's two different types of measures in which a city can increase taxes. Number one is called a specific tax increase measure and the second is a general tax increase measure. The specific tax increase measure means that when that measure passes, the money has to go specifically to what the measure is for. However, that vote requires a two-thirds majority to win. That makes it a lot harder to get a measure like that passed. A general tax increase only requires a majority vote. So basically, 51% uh, of people vote for that, that measure passes. Now here's where the debate is coming in. The city is putting a measure onto the ballot, two measures in fact, but specifically the first measure, measure A, they're putting on the ballot as a general tax increase. However, they are promising that the majority of that money, if not all of it, is supposed to go to a Safer Neighborhoods initiative. They, they say in the measure that the money is going to go to the Modesto Police Department, the Modesto Fire Department, gang prevention, gang suppression, uh, all sorts of things like that. However, they put in this wording, and maintaining other general city services. Because they put in that wording, the city said, the city attorney said by his own admission, that that makes it a general tax increase, and they are using case law to do this. And so they are pointing to other cities that have done this. So even though they're promising that the money is going to go to the police department, the fire department, these kinds of things, um, they're getting it on the ballot as a general tax increase so that all they need is a 50% vote to pass it. They're following that measure up with a measure B, the Safer Neighborhoods Advisory Measure B. And that measure says that 100% of Measure A will go to what they promised it would go to and that there would be an advisory committee to make sure that they do that. So the, the debate is, if they're saying that the money is going specifically to a certain thing, should they put it on the ballot as a specific tax increase or should they use this case law and uh, other tactics to put it on as a general tax increase? And the council split. Now, before we get to the video, I want you to know that it was really important for me to be there to film this because for one reason or another that was not made clear to me, the city did not film and broadcast this particular city council meeting. And when I heard that this city council meeting was not going to be filmed and broadcasted on Government Access TV and archived on the internet, I thought that I should be there to capture it on film. Now, I'm not really set up to film and broadcast a three-hour-long city council meeting in its entirety. But what I made sure to do was to capture on film each individual city council member's opinion on the measure today. Now, the audio isn't all that great in some points, and the camera does move around sometimes, but it's the only video record of what happened. So thank you for watching and supporting local independent news coverage in Modesto, California. Uh, I think... It's important to recognize the information that's been presented to the council from the, from the workshop last week, as well as the information we had here. It's very evident that uh, we we have an issue in public safety. Teresa acknowledges it. I think uh, uh, Georgianne acknowledges acknowledges it. And very diverse uh, crowd here acknowledge we have a problem with public safety and a, a problem with. Uh, desiring to how do we fix it considering our constraints and our revenue services. Last week I uh, had, had that discussion of how can we fix after the tax is gone. We need to also focus on those economic enterprises that need to, to <coughs> develop in the city of Modesto unless we want to run a tax again in the future. Um, having said that, they, the evidence is there, I think. Um, the, 
the difficulty I had, and I mentioned it earlier, is uh, how do we get to the, a point of, of uh, funding our, our problem? There is some confusion in this measure, probably not so much in the people in this room. But once we leave this room, there's going to be a lot of people out in the community asking questions, weighing in, and trying to understand what this measure is, is going to do. Uh, I think absolutely, I have no doubt in my mind that those that have worked so diligently are doing so with the purpose of trying to be as clear as possible and coming up with a solution. At the same time, in the last number of, of days, particularly the last couple of days, I've been hearing a lot from constituents and people from both sides of the aisle, from all walks of life, having some concern about this particular measure. One, because it is, there is some confusion on it. And uh, just the, the purpose of saying succinctly, they would support a specific tax, which I would support a, uh, a, a, me a placing a ballot measure of a specific tax on the ballot and let the people decide. It has a higher level, level of approval. And, and I, I think that the, the, the public, once they understand it is a specific tax, would step up. Now, that, that's debatable. We don't know. There haven't been polls to prove it. But I, I support a specific tax being placed on the ballot. I, I don't support this being placed on the ballot because of the uh, of that confusion I don't think it's it's going to make it now that's that's a debate I'm not I'm not questioning anybody that uh, uh, of how this is going to go forward uh, I, I just that's that's where I'm at I have to be honest with my beliefs in that particular system um, so so having said that just reading some from my notes here I, I would rather forego the a and B the confusion potential challenges that, that I'm hearing, uh, or maybe they aren't there, I don't know. But I know for a specific tax, the money is going to go specifically for what we are promising our voters. I think there is still out in the general public a significant mistrust of government. I'm part of it. I got that. I work hard to try to uh, encourage people to, that we're trying to do the best we can with the equipment and the financing that we have, but it's still there. When, we, when I talk to voters out in our community, there's still a, a large mistrust. So to ensure to them that we have a specific tax in place, that's what I would like us to move forward today. And, and I'll you know, at that point and see what the rest of the council thinks. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> so, you know, just again, just looking at the simple numbers, you know, $1.2 million of the half cent sales taxes is going to something else other than public safety. Well, that that could actually be covered by the revenue increases that we're seeing with the economy growing on its own. You know, so again, looking at public safety tax, which is what I believe we are telling uh, the people are telling us that they want. And if we're going to go to them with, this is what we think the city needs, then you know we can't stop because we think we're going to fail. I mean. I would be the poster boy for that for that sentiment. I mean, I wouldn't be here if I didn't believe it was right after I lost the first four times. But I got to—I believe I could bring something good to the city. So I stood up for what I thought was right. This is a, one of those situations. You can't—you can't shy away because you think you're going to fail. I mean, if you believe it's what's right, if you believe we need public safety for the city, and that's what that's what's going to make the city better, that's what's going to bring more revenue, like Councilmember Cogdale said, because we're going to have a safer city, then stand up and say that's what we need. You know, this is this is misleading. I mean, it, it just is. You know, we, I mean, it's, it's less than 10% of this money is going to go towards something other than public safety. I mean, we're all, we all agree whether you're saying it's a half cent sales tax or a specific tax, uh, you know, I mean, I mean, a half cent sales tax that's a general or a specific. I mean, we're all in agreement, and you know, but if we believe that public safety is what needs to happen, then we need to stand for that. And so, you know, that's where I'm at. And you know, I, I, I you know, I hear the people speaking out there, and that's, I believe they want us to have the guts to go for it. If that's what we think we need, then we should do it. Councilmember Madrigal. 
This local news coverage is brought to you by Hillock Family Dental. Meet the team and find out more at hillockdental.com. Um, you know, talking about some other numbers, um, I was just looking up some of the some of the final vote tallies uh, from uh, the last election and um, the one cent sales tax. I you know, got eleven thousand eight hundred fifteen votes uh, saying yes and twelve thousand three hundred twenty two votes saying no. So. As a lot of y'all know that's like a 507 vote difference. Uh, you know, that's a number that that you know we also can't ignore. And I think that um, I, I believe, and I, I've seen a lot of people that live in um, historically underserved communities, such as in West Modesto and South Modesto, um, you know, south of Yosemite, um, Avenue, call it the airport neighborhoods, and. I talked to folks when I was um, knocking on doors in, 20, in 2013, telling them about Measure X, and I didn't find anybody in those neighborhoods that said to me, no, I'm not going to vote for Measure X. They understood it. They made the connection like this. They said, you need this to be able to have uh, more revenue so we can have more patrols in my neighborhood, more services, so that maybe the next time that it rains, you know, <coughs> some of our streets in West Modesto don't flood um, because you know the infrastructure got fixed. They said yes, they were going to vote for them. Um, I don't know, Mr. Mayor, if you're ready to accept a, a motion, but uh, I'm, I'd, I'd like everybody to talk one. first. And then sure. Okay. Uh, um, you know, and, and uh, just if we're interested in safe, a safe community, uh, and we want, you know, that our houses that have people in them that we don't want, the crack houses next door to you, ha having a half cent sales tax is not going to get rid of that. For If it's strictly for the police, it will not get rid of that because that, that's code enforcement. That's taking them to, to, to court. That's having an attorney to take them to court. You might have more policemen out there, but they're not, they, they're not going to be able to do the code enforcement. That's not their job. And having children be able to go to a park and uh, have something to do to, through the summer, that's part of safety. I think we have to look at all that as safety. And just because we're saying only 10%, 10% is a lot. We're just saying 10%. But 10% for something good for our neighbor, for and neighborhoods are, it's where there's parks. It's in any part of the city, and and I'm saying I am believe that we need a safer city, but it also includes having where the children can go, have some place because they're not influenced by gangs. If they don't have any place to go, and p these people in the areas that would have the park that would do this are the ones that their children, they can't afford to send their children to daycare for the day or specific, uh, uh, you know, places that you have to pay for. We had this at one time. It would be nice to get it back so that we could see we would have less gangs, less children, and we would have a safer community. And so I am for the A and B because I think, I don't know why it's so confusing to everybody else, but to me, it seems like it's really spelled out. And I think that we, people will understand that. That's where we're talking about. Thanks, Mayor. <laughs> this is just, uh, for me anyways, I mean, this is uh, just uh, quite a dilemma. I mean, to sit here and um, have to uh, choose between these taxes, something that um, I don't believe in the, in the whole thing. I mean, if it was up to me, we wouldn't even be d discussing this, and we would have spent this time focusing on um, other efforts and other ways to um, gain uh, revenue other than a tax. But we are faced with it, and we have to make a decision, and it's a strategic one, as to how we go about um, getting this money um, in order to make our community a better place to live. There's a lot of discussion and talk tonight about the specific tax, 
But I can tell you right now that once you go down that direction, you're going to have a lot of people, many people in this room, who will go after the specific tax. And then it's not going to be about public safety. It's going to be about pensions. It's going to be about salaries. And the police and fire will be on the front lines of that and have to weather that storm because that's going to be the attack. So, and you've got to tackle a two-thirds. So there's no guarantee in that. And everybody can sit here tonight and talk about, well, that's the tax and that's what we should go after. So again, this is where there's a strategy here as to you know, what we need to do in order, to, if, if this is the decision made that you know, we want the voters to make a, a choice as to whether or not they want their taxes raised, how we go about doing that. And there's no guarantee in you know, going down that specific tax road because again it's with the two-thirds and the arguments that will be made it'll be very hard to get that tax passed as it relates to the general tax it's it is a trust me tax that's there's there's no way around that that's what measure X was and that's what this is going to be and that's what it's going to come down to and it's it's just a um, there are gambles and risks um, inherent in going that way as well. So it's, it's, it's just tough. I mean, again, for someone like myself to sit here and talk about these two tax measures, which I don't believe in either one of them, um, but I do believe that the people ought to have the right to make that choice. If, if they want to um, you know, choose to have their taxes raised in order to provide more services, then so be it. Um, but where do you draw the line as to, you know, when do we do our job and, and when do we have, you know, citizens constantly vote on, on what they think they need? I mean, if that were the case, then we should put it out there that uh, which tax do you want? Do you want a general tax or do you want a special tax? I mean, how far do we take this? So it's, uh, or do you want, you know, no taxes um, or no taxes as far as raising the tax? So it's just, uh, I don't know, it's a, it's a real uh, quandary and a dilemma. And, uh, but if, if I had to choose between the two, um, I think I would go with the general tax because it isn't all about police and fire. And sure, they're important, but there's a lot more to running a city than just police and fire. The police and the fire have to have something to protect. <laughs> and, you know, money has to be spent on parks and money has to be spent in, in other areas and neighborhoods and streets and roads and uh, deferred maintenance and things of that nature. So it's, it's not just about police and fire. So that being said, if, if I had to choose, um, I would go with, with the general tax. And again, that, then, that, then it's up to us to convince the voters that we're gonna spend the money in an appropriate manner that will benefit their lives. This local news coverage is brought to you by Hillock Family Dental. Meet the team and find out more at hillockdental.com. So I think I'll take uh, the next turn here. Uh, one of the things that most people aren't, aren't clear on is, uh, is what we spend our money on today, uh, percentage-wise. If you take net revenues and, or net, net, um, net of each department, so um, we spend 85% of our net dollars on public safety right now. Police and fire get 85% of our net dollars. And, and this gives about 90% to police and fire. So it's not very far off from truly general revenues that, that we do right now. I mean, this, this almost parallels uh, what our current spending patterns are. What it doesn't include is is really park, park maintenance, and uh, that's the other 5%. So if you get outside of that, so if you're going to do code enforcement and clear up drug houses and do stuff like that, you need more than police. I'm going to tell you, and, and, and I know my <coughs> police officers aren't really thrilled when they hear this, but I would like to have a few of the dollars go to hire private security in our parks rather than put a armed cop walking through our parks so that 
part of it could be that form of public safety, which is not something you can do with a strictly public safety tax. Of course, I don't know if I can get convince the rest of the council to do that when it comes time, but I think it's a more efficient use of our tax dollars. So that's that's part of what I'd like to see. I mean, uh, I, I know we could get a lot more bang uh, out of our buck if we did stuff like that. And it would only be a real small portion, you know, maybe maybe a hundred or three two hundred thousand dollars of it going into that form but that's a much more efficient use of our dollars for patrolling our parks uh, maybe maybe we don't end up doing that but at least we have the options to do it and and if you have a purely public safety tax you can't do that so um, last time I want to go back to last time a little bit measure X because this is not deja vu I mean I don't care what anybody says, this isn't the same thing all over again. Last time we did a full set and we it was a shotgun trying to hit everything within a within a more like an atomic bomb trying to hit everything within uh, the city limits. Uh, it it included trees, it included parks, roads. It included, and I think it was a really important thing, it included balancing the budget which we hadn't done before. This, balance, this budget today is totally balanced and truly balanced. Um, it, it, we had that on there before we solved retiree health problems. We were headed to an $8 million, by 2020 our projections were $8 million to pay for, public, uh, for retiree health. Today, uh, we're, the report's gonna be published here in the next Couple weeks, couple probably probably in July or August. July or August. July. Okay, <laughs> July. Uh, but but our liability when we started there was 104 million for retiree health. We just got the numbers in. It's 31 million today, and we've done that, and we're going down. We hit the peak number on retiree health uh, last year, and we're headed down. We're going to spend less this year than. Last year, we're going to spend less next year than this year. We're headed down to $2 million by 2020 instead of $8 million. We've done that. We've, we've made those hard choices, and, the, and our employees have made those hard choices. Um, we've, we've, we've been working on and, and basically solved our, our pension problem. We are, all of our groups are either right now headed towards it or still in negotiations to head toward a hundred percent pickup of their share of the pension. We had none of that two years ago. I mean, these are all positive things that we didn't do before. And, and I think it's reasons that, I think that we had such a narrow loss last time, just cutting the tax in half might be enough to have passed it and by making 90% instead of 40% public safety uh, or targeted to be public safety, I think, I, think that's, I think that's a winner there also. So those, those are the things, those are the reasons that I, why I think we need to do it. I think, this, the, I think the form that we have here is the right way to do it. And, um, and I, think our, I think our public safety guys, our chief over here, needs to know that he's not just keeping the lid on it any longer. Yeah, that's words he actually used. Mm -hmm. I think this chief over here needs to know that he's going to be able to keep start making those 50% uh, response times getting up to 90% like they should be. I think those are the things that we need to do, and we're not going to do that if we don't have more revenue. So, I got a comment. Just a quick I'll, comment. I'll, Dave? I think, you know, I never, John, I thought, never I voted I against, uh, you know, uh, Councilmember Kyle Gilbrow, I don't know, 20 seconds. I was saying you know, I've I never voted against, uh, you guys want me to wait? It's okay. So, Councilmember Kyle Gilbrow, I appreciate you bringing this up. You know, I've never, in my eight years, almost eight years, never voted against letting the people decide for themselves. I voted for Measure X voted for the road tax, you know, to put it on, I voted to put it on the ballot so that people can make a decision for themselves. So, 
you know, I, and because of that, I feel, you know, I feel like, again, I go back to feeling like the people are being misled here. So I want to take the moment just to apologize to you because I'm not going to vote to put this on the ballot. And I do believe you should make a decision for yourself. I just don't think that it's being presented to you clearly. And I just feel like you're being misled. So. John, did you want to? Yeah. Um, I never saw your hand, so I... Well, okay. we're taking, doing it. Um, you know, uh, the Major X was really close, and um, there, was, there was a lot of misunderstanding over it. And I do agree that by cutting this in half, that it, it does make it a little easier. Um, from a council's point of view, we you know we know what's going on in the city quite a bit, uh, where the deficits are, the problems, because we live with it, we do it all the time, and I really really want a public safety tax to pass. I I I, um, I don't want to see it fail, and I'm glad we're cutting it back to half penny. Um, and I think the A B method is probably the best uh, choice. It's not the greatest, but. Um, we have a lot of people here that just don't like taxes in, in Modesto. They, they don't like it. But I think those people need to realize that a lot of the revenue from this sales tax is going to come from people that live outside the city. And uh, those people, are, of course, they don't like it. They don't want to pay more taxes. But they can go to Stockton and they can pay more sales tax. And that'd be fine. Go ahead. Go to Stockton and shop. But Modesto's here. and. Um, you know, we, we, we have some issues. We have to do something about it. And um, doggone, you know, it, um, I think it'll pass this time. Thank you, John. Tony, your turn. Um, you know, I just just wanted to piggyback on your comments, uh, Mr. Mayor, about, um, you know, hiring um, folks that, you know, maybe will cost our general fund less money to, for example, keep our, our park safe. Uh, and on the same vein, I'd like to see some sort of a downtown host program where folks walk around and patrol our downtown um, that maybe don't, you know, don't cost us the price of a full of a full time equivalent of a police officer, but nevertheless um, are known as the eyes and ears that can, you know, call call for help um, immediately if needed. I've seen it work in other cities. Um, I think it could work here and you know, for a fraction of the cost. Um, you know, just regarding, uh, I know Councilmember Cogdill was saying that, you know, he, see, he sees this as a trust me tax. I, I, I just view it slightly differently. I, I see this more as a, as a uh, trust Modesto, but tell Modesto, uh, you know, ballot initiative, you know, that, that we're presenting to the voters, that we're saying, you know, trust Modesto, but tell Modesto what you want this money to be spent on. And, and so that, for that reason, and, and the other reasons that I've stated and the other folks have stated um, about why they support this, um, I just want to put forward a motion uh, that we direct staff to uh, bring back these two ballot measures and language so we can vote on them in the next uh, city council meeting on June 23rd, incorporating the specific language changes that we were discussing earlier when we were looking at the ballot measure language for A and B. And I, I welcome a second. I second. Okay, question. I have a question here. Yeah, I, I, just a clarification on this big question. The clarif clarification, uh, and the chief, you can answer. Um, in my understanding, we have public service people that work, public service officers that work for the police department. Are, are, is there any reason why, if we uh, wanted to have park patrols or those kinds of things, could they operate in the public safety environment like that? Yes, they could. Now, the I, the I, issue is, as we've cut budgets, uh, we've cut cut the CSOs way, way, way back. So yeah. We still have them available right now, but yes. So, so my, my, my point in, then is if we had a public safety only tax, uh, we could hire public safety individuals to patrol parks or other kinds of things. It's not full police. They're, they're unsworn. They don't carry a gun, and they wouldn't be as expensive. Uh, just, just for just clarification, Mr. Uh, Councilor Rosalaki, do you mean community service? Yeah. Community yeah. service. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. I may be using the wrong term. Yeah, but that's too much. I okay. Want to so I have a motion and a second. I will say before before we I call the vote, then uh, 
that there still be more expensive than higher, higher, than than higher than private, private security. More than so, private security. Um, and if I so, could just clarify, Mr. Mayor. I've seen the net impact. Uh, I mean, the, the net effect on the element that you don't want, for example, in a downtown, is still the same, whether they're uniform or whether they're private security or, you know, it still has that impact that they see them come and then that unwanted element leaves because they recognize what so, I think. So, yeah, call for the vote, city clerk. Aye. Aye. Lopez? No. Salaki? No. Neuer? Yes. Aye. Mayor Marsh. Aye. Okay. So are there any matters too late for the agenda? Seeing none, we are adjourned uh, next oh. week, folks. Oh. This